this one comes from Azriel underscore PC. Can Westbrook hurry up and get traded already? Um, and best case scenarios for the Lakers to get off his deal. So I don't buy into Russ and Patrick Beverly sharing a 1.2584 second hug as evidence that everything's hunky dory and that they want to play together and that this is going to work out. Maybe it does. I still can't shake the fact that Beverly might have cost the like the Russ a the the Russ KD era Thunder a title when he dove into Russ Russ injures his meniscus and that started this you know they weren't all related but that was the first of just injuries derailing all these Thunder playoff campaigns I just find it hard to believe uh, that being said if it happens like it, time not time heals everything but enough time has passed where maybe Russ doesn't care but like Beverly's talked shit about him in the semi recent past as well as has Russ so I would just be shocked. Uh, if this ends well for the Lakers, I do think they need to move Rust. It's not even just he's a terrible fit, but it's just his salary number. You're better off divesting into deepening your rotation. The trick is, though, can you find a deal where it makes sense to give up both your first round picks? And really the only one that's if you want to be honest, would I give up two first round picks for? And these are some of the scenarios to get healed and Turner. I would. Would I do it for the Jazz package where it's like if you're getting Boyan and Conley or is it Boyan by Donovich and Malik Beasley or more likely Boyan by Thomas Jordan Clarkson. I'm probably not doing that. Just Miles Turner's young enough to where if you were going to get him, that could be a very long-term marriage for you. Um, I understand why LA would do either. I also get it doesn't mean that let's say Miles Turner isn't worth a Lakers distant first round pick. I think he is. It would just mean that the Lakers don't want to go that direction, which is fine if that's what they're admitting to, but them not making such a deal doesn't mean that Miles Turner isn't worth it. Uh, but when we're getting into those scenarios, the only one that's really come up where I think it's been a no-brainer is if they got Kyrie. And with that sort of looming over the specter of everything, they might be asking themselves, well, do we need these picks to maybe facilitate a sign and trade for Kyrie when he reaches free agency? Is it even feasible to do that and work underneath the hard cap and actually feel the competitive roster? Are they maybe even waiting for this to collapse in the middle of the season to where they're going to want those picks? The, the Nets are just so combustible in that regard so that's why i'm like not entirely convinced that they're going to move Russ because they want to keep other scenarios open i also think if you can stick it out until the middle of the season it's going to be cheaper to actually get off his deal uh, i don't want to just you know regurgitate though the same trade scenarios I went through indy uh we know the one with utah there's also the Kyrie specter looms even though it's off the table right now um people have talked about the knicks one i've seen knicks fans or listened to nick Red Knicks fans, Knicks writers, listen to Knicks podcasters who think that New York would be able to get a first round pick uh, if they take on Russ. I and, and while sending out Julius Randle, I don't think that's possible. If the Knicks are including maybe some of the other picks that they have, where it's like, hey, we'll give you this Washington 2023 pick that's probably not going to convey in 2023, but let's just say this Washington pick, you give us your 2027 pick, and we're building, you know, Randle and Fournier. And then we're taking back Russ. Like maybe that's possible because then the Lakers are getting an imminent first round pick uh, that they could trade. Uh, then I, I don't like, I just don't view this possible. If you're the Lakers though, and you're looking to get out of the Russell Westbrook contract without giving up like any draft equity at all, I would view the Knicks as a viable trade partner. Yeah. Fournier is a good basketball fit. Randall's not the cleanest basketball fit, but I think he helps you in second units more than Russ could at this point. And then if you've kept your draft equity, you can worry about if you want cap space or you need to move those guys. I mean, look, Julius Randle's contract, I don't. I think it's probably one of the worst in the NBA, but the, the Westbrook number is just so massive that teams, even for a year, are going to just get you know, twitchy about it and be hesitant to take it on. And so if I'm the Knicks, just by virtue of creating the extra cap space and if you're going to buy out Russell Westbrook anyway, you give up, let's say, Fournier and Randle for Russell Westbrook. You're getting rid of him. Now you're opening up minutes for more of the kids. You're not getting a first round pick, but you've gotten out of Julius Randle's contract and he has four years left on it at 106 million guaranteed. You've gotten out of the final two years of Evan Fournier's deal. He's uh, two years and 36.9 million guaranteed. And then a $19 million team option, which I'd be shocked if any team is picking that up in 24, 25. So you've now gotten out of those deals. No, no extra draft equity, but you have just cleared the runway for players this season when looking at, you know, certainly the offensive pecking order for RJ Barrett, if Julius Randall isn't there, but also just ensuring that without Randall there, you're, you have a reason to play Obi Toppin. And then that's even by extension, like, yeah, there should be more minutes available for, for Jericho Sims, even with Isaiah Hartenstein and um, Mitchell Robinson in the fold. 
So if you need to expand the deal and you want a first round pick, maybe you're sending Cam Reddish out as part of that. If I'm the Lakers and it's one first round pick for Randall Fournier and Reddish in exchange for us, I'm, I'm honestly probably not doing that. If I'm the Lakers, but if you can get the Knicks to pull the trigger on that deal without giving up a draft pick. And if I'm the Knicks, I would do it. I'm just flat out. I care more about opening up minutes this season by getting rid of Russ. And then they're going to have more cap flexibility moving forward or sooner. I should say as well, I would absolutely do that. It would just be what's the Lakers appetite for taking on long-term money. Um, the other one that I've kind of identified is I'm just surprised we haven't heard more about it is the Spurs. Uh, they have like, as I'm recording this, I have them at like just still over a, a truckload of cap space. And so like between 30 and $33 million, just somewhere in between there. And so you could almost just do um, Josh Richardson and like, are they giving up Zach Collins in that deal? Um, uh, Will they give you Romeo Langford, maybe, or do, are they actually high on him? But you could do Richardson plus another salary for Russ, and it's going to be a smaller salary because Doug McDermott's the highest paid player on the Spurs right now. Look, Josh Richardson and Doug McDermott saves the Lakers like twenty something million dollars. Those two combined make about like a little under twenty six million. Um, Russ is slated to make forty seven point one, and so you're looking at over twenty million in savings just off the top there. And we know L.A. does sort of run itself like a like a, like a small market team on in certain instances, uh, how much you have to give up to actually make that package work? I don't know. Would a 2026 swap get it done just because Doug McDermott is kind of a... No, it's not because the Spurs are taking on so much money, but if they would do that for one pick, on the Lakers, I might consider it. Doug McDermott has money on the books for next season. It's $13.8 million. It's expiring. They could probably just jettison him and, and while including a second round pick would be my guess. Josh Richardson actually helps them by actually giving them a three and D wing. When you look at their roster right now, they do not have a three and D wing. The closest they get is Juan Toscano Anderson, or maybe even Beverly himself. I just like, it's not Troy Brown jr. Uh, it's not, I, if you wanted to go Austin Reeves, I don't know if he's like three enough. There's, is he wing enough there either? So you would get a three and D wing who had quietly a good season splitting time, uh, between Boston and San Antonio last year. I would do that deal if I were the Lakers as well. And if you're going to then, you know, hold on to Russ or see what other opportunities evolve as the season goes on, maybe Charlotte becomes one if they're just looking to get off Gordon Hayward's deal or maybe even Terry Rozier's deal because they're sort of looking to start anew. It's very uh, it's very unclear what's happening there. So those are some, I think San Antonio and the Knicks one I laid out specifically are just some different ones that I haven't heard in a lot talked about. Nope. 